Hi everyone, welcome to my new Python for Finance tutorial series. Um, in this series, I will try to go over pretty much everything you might want to know for using Python for the finance. So to start things off, we are going to do some pretty basic things, uh, like how to actually get the data, like how to actually work with those data. In our example, we will use some big corporations in the US stock exchange. Uh, but of course, uh, you can use it um, for the entire S&P or for the entire Dow Jones or for the entire NASDAQ or any other markets that is much more attractive or relevant to your own stock portfolio. But just for illustrative purpose, we will stick to those big corporations uh, first. Uh, later on, we are also going to visualize and also going to analyze those capture the data um, for makings um, to help us to formulate some kind of trading strategies and also to help us to uh, facilitate our own decision making. So we have a lot of exciting programming exercise ahead of us. So let's go ahead and let's get started. In the end of this lecture series, you will be able to build something that I've shown right here. Everything can be done with the use of Python and everything is automatic. In this lesson, we will do a very quick recap on how we can capture and download live data from different websites and store them in a CSV format uh, for any applications later. In our example, we are using web scrapping uh, to capture the data from Yahoo Finance page but of course, you can change it to whatever websites you want as long as those websites did not keep you out. So this is extremely useful and extremely easy. Okay, so first thing first, we are going to import um, several libraries that uh, include the pandas as PDs because we're going to save everything into a uh, CSV file. And then we also need to import the date Time because we need to have a time object. Um, so we also need to uh, import the request, and from that from that request, um, we are going. We need to handle one of the exception that is called the connection error. So just in case if we cannot get anything from that URLs, we are going to. Uh, the programs can continue to run. So, and then the BS4, from BS4, we are going to import the uh, beautiful shoot. And um, that's it for the library. So there are two functions that I also need to create. So the first function is to get, um, get the information from, from the URL. So we are going to define a function called real time stock. Uh, we are going to pass a stock code into it. And so first of all, we need a URL to locate the, 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 the information that we would like to have. And then we are going to try to see if there's anything uh, that we can get from the URL. So we just use the request dot get ur dot get and then use the URL. So for the web content, um, we need to use a beautiful shoot to help us to capture all the tests, uh, all the tests from the these URL. So I will show you how to get this URL later on. And then from that content, web content, we are going to find um, everything from the div first and then everything inside that, uh, inside that div and everything, every span inside that div should be. So let me show you, we are going to give a uh, give pass the web content and also a path to it, class path to it. There are two parameters. So we are going to capture things, uh, capture the test from 
uh, from the URL and then pass this uh, pass this web content into a function that I'm going to create. So this is a div. Um, so this is the function that I'm going to have. There are two things. One is the web content, and the other is uh, there. And the uh, and the second parameter is the class path. So inside that, inside this, um, we are going to search the div. Um, search all the div inside this class. But because we are going to provide a a specific um, class path, so it will just locate this path inside uh, the div, and then we are going to get everything out from that uh, div. So we are going to have this, and then in the first row, we are going to find all spans. So that means first of all, we we are going to because there are so many div um, under this web, web content, we are going to find the div with that class path with with a specific class path, and then inside that div there are so many spans. So we are going to find all the spans, and then we are going to put everything uh, into a list. Put all the spans dot get um, that's full span in the spans. Put everything into a list, and then except uh, we are going to handle our first error that is the index errors, just in case we cannot get anything from this URL. So we are going to give a null value to it. Return test. Um, that is the test. Yep. So we are going to have these functions to help us to find the value inside uh, this web content inside this um, URL. So this I'm going to change it. Uh, going to use it, and I will show you how to get the class path and also the URL. And the next thing is that we need to do um, is to make sure this error handle correctly. This is the except the connection error. So just in case if there's any connection error when we try to get the contents from from this URL and it will help us to uh, handle it. So we are going to return something. So for this example, because we are going to return the, um, return the price and also the price change. So I'm going to just uh, return the price uh, and also the price changes. So just in case, there's nothing there. I'm going to. There's a connection error, so I'm going to put a null value for them. So there should be something for this price and also the the changes right here. So now let's see how we can assign the URL and also assign the uh, class path to it. So first of all, we are at the financeyahoo.com page and then we search uh, any stock just say for example we are going to search the uh, Berkshire Halfway this company um, so we have um, everything right here and this is the first information that we would like to have and this is the URL for this web page and the second thing that we would like to capture is the price and also the price change that is right here. So we are going to find the cost path. Right? So we just uh, 
right kick on this and then in spats. And then we are going to find the outer, the most popular um, div class, and that and this is this that one. So, so you can see that there's a uh, some 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 class down, down there. But um, this is the first one that we would like to locate. Just one once we locate this one, um, the content inside this is um, called the span. You can see there's span. We are going to capture the information from that span. And you can see that there's the, some information inside this. Say, for example, this is a price in the first span. And then this is the, uh, the price changes uh, in the second span. So we are going to copy this path and get the span out from this, uh, from this div class. So we are going to paste the path right here. And also, we are going to paste the class path right here. Um, yep. Copy to too many information. Yeah. So I just need this path. And this is going to be put inside here. Okay, and then this is the URL. I need to change it back to a text format. A strange format, I should say. This is the first. Let's... This should be correct, okay. And then the stock call uh, should be something like this stock. Um, say for example, the first one is the B R K hyphen B, and then we are going to put this back to uh, this code. Um, to complete this pathway, uh, so I have to change to this one and this one. So now we can assign the value from this text back to the price and also the cha price changes. So if text is not equals to now. So else, if they are not equal to now, so the price and changes. So I just copy. Remember, the first value of this test is a is the price, and then the sec the first band contains the price and the second span spans uh, contains the uh, the price changes so we can capture all this value so next thing is we can actually test uh, what we can get from this uh, from this function so let's say for example price dot so I'm going to put the inside this. Yep. Let's see. And there's a error on the get test. So for spin, okay. For should be this one. There's a typo right here. Should be spend, not spends. So let's try again. Good. Now you can see that we can actually capture the price and also the price changes. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
In the next video, I will show you how to capture more information from the web page and how to perform the web scrapping for multiple stock and how to store them into a usable format. So see you in the next video.